Hey guys, we are going to wrap up our conversation about World War II today. Uh, when we left off, we had discussed uh, the fact that, you know, now the United States is in the war um, and, you know, Japan has attacked with Pearl Harbor and, and we really had a turn of the tide. Uh, during these three major battles, uh, which I described as the hinge of fate, uh, where you have uh, the Battle of Guadalcanal uh, that helped turn the tide against the Japanese, and now uh, the U.S. forces in the Pacific were on the offensive. The Japanese are retreating. They're uh, having problems now. Um, you have the Battle of Stalingrad uh, in the Soviet Union in Russia, uh, where the Germans threw all these forces into this battle to take Stalingrad, and uh, the Russians eventually were able to counterattack and encircle those forces, and there was a huge blow to the Germans and their effort in taking Moscow. Uh, and then you also have guys. Um, the Battle of El Alamein, which was important because if the Germans and the Italians win the Battle of El Alamein, then they're going to take the Suez Canal and cut off trade for Britain. And so that's a, a big, big problem for the British if they lose that battle and uh, the Germans take the Suez Canal. Okay, uh, and so that was what we called the Hinge of Fate and now things are turning in the right direction for the Allies, uh, for Britain and Russia and, and the U.S. Uh, and so now it's all about um, winning the war, okay? And so uh, the United States is going to eventually land in Europe, land in France, because that's what you have to do to beat Germany, to conquer Germany, is you have to land a force uh, in France. So fortunately, you know, Great Britain is still free and independent uh, and is our ally. And so they're just right there. So all you have to do is cross the English Channel to get into France. Uh, and so June 6, 1944, that's exactly what we do. You guys have probably heard of it. It's called D-Day, typically. Um, the technical term for the operation was called Operation Overlord. Uh, so that's what they named the operation to land in France. Uh, but everybody just refers to it as D-Day because that's the day of the invasion. Um, and so that was the biggest invasion, obviously, with D-Day. Uh, and so big, big deal, guys. Lots of uh, American and Canadian and British soldiers uh, lost their lives, gave their lives uh, to put a force in France that could defeat Nazi Germany, defeat these people that were just doing terrible things. Uh, I'm sure many of you are aware of the Holocaust. Um, so the Nazis rounding up all these Jews in Europe and sending them east um, to camps in like Ukraine and, and Poland and places like that. Um, and either working them to death or some of them just, okay, you just send them to the gas chambers. So they had these gas chambers that were built to look like showers. That That's what people were told, okay, you know, take your clothes off. You're going to get cleaned up since you're so dirty and whatever. Uh, just, just so there's no fight, just to keep them calm. Um, and then they'd... Instead of showers coming on, they turn on the gas, and it's this chamber, and so pretty soon they're all dead. Um, and then they would cremate their, the bodies, the evidence, basically. So terrible, terrible thing. Um, the low end of, of Jews killed in the Holocaust is probably around uh, 6, million, 6 million Jews. So on top of all this death going on in, in the war, guys, you have these... You know, all these innocent people that um, that's called genocide, right? So it's just their ethnicity uh, was why they were being persecuted, why they were being rounded up and killed. 
Uh, so terrible, terrible thing. And it's not the first time we've seen genocide in the world, but it was the first time that a country had sanctioned it, a government had really sanctioned it and used industrialization, you know, they, they use their industrial means to carry it out. And so that's how you get such large numbers um, of deaths, of murders, uh, is they use the rail system. They had a, you know, very bureaucratic plan put in place. It's called the, the Vicini Protocol um, to, to do this, to carry this out, to execute, you know, Hitler's orders to, you know, what he called the final solution to kill all these Jews in Europe. So terrible, terrible thing going on, and so I think that makes it very relevant. Uh, you know these these young soldiers, you know, giving their lives uh, to help their country win the war because um, this was a war that had to unfortunately be fought to you know, get rid of Adolf Hitler and the Nazis to get rid of the Japanese extremists in the military um they had to be stopped or or millions and millions of more civilians were going to die uh and so <clears throat> a lot of people this was heavy fighting very difficult fighting at d-day on d-day especially uh the american sectors of the beach in normandy is where we landed so we land in france guys in june uh and by september we have liberated Paris, uh, so everything's looking good. Hey, we're going to be home by Christmas. Not so fast, right? So winter sets in. We, we have to dig in a line uh, around through France, throughout France and dig in and just hold on because Hitler is going to make one last push. He's going to divert a bunch of his troops from the Soviet Union from the east and send them to the west and counterattack in the winter. And this is known as the Battle of the Bulge because you have your line, um, the front, basically, right? So our troops are all around here. German troops are on the other side. Uh, so this is the front, and when the German troops attacked, the lines bulged, bent in, uh, because of the pressure of the attack. But the key is they didn't break. So if the Germans broke the lines and got through, then we're in trouble and we're going to have a major setback and major problems. But they bent but didn't break, so that's why it's called the Battle of the Bulge, because a lot of the lines, the front lines, bulged with their counterattack. But we didn't break. We pushed them back when spring rolled around, and it's on to Germany. Uh, we actually let the Soviets enter Germany first, enter Berlin first, and, and take Berlin uh, after all they had been through, uh, because, you know, the United States is untouched. The Soviet Union was burned and destroyed, and um, Stalingrad and Leningrad, these these major Soviet cities, they, they were just, uh, a lot of it turned to rubble. Um, so terrible, terrible. So we let them in first. Uh, and basically, guys, when we conquered Germany and in May of uh, 1945, uh, we partitioned Germany, which means we split it up. We said, okay, America's gonna control this part, this part. Britain's gonna control this part. France, you know, they had been, at the beginning of the war, an ally. Uh, so when they're liberated, we let them have a part too. And then the Eastern half went to the Soviets to control. Uh, so we basically controlled them under occupation in that in that way. Uh, so now we got to beat Japan, guys. You know, there's been a lot of intense fighting um, around Japan as we get closer and closer. The casualties for our troops go higher and higher and higher. You know, you have a huge number of casualties uh, when we take Iwo Jima. Um, Okinawa is one of the Japanese islands, traditional Japanese islands. Um, so just off the main four islands. Uh, and when we take Okinawa, there's a huge number of casualties for our troops, and there's a huge number of casualties for uh, the people living on Okinawa. So uh, a bunch of 
Okinawan women and children jumped off these cliffs and just killed themselves rather than be uh, taken capture by the Americans, uh, by our forces. Uh, and so we kind of know to take Japan, it's going to be a huge number of casualties. It's, it's going to cost uh, probably half a million of our soldiers and in that process you're going to have several million japanese civilians die as well soldiers and civilians die as well are the estimates and so it's just it's not going to be good it's going to be very terrible uh we believe because they just won't the samurai way they just won't give up uh and so <clears throat> we get the soviets to agree to finally attack them because even though they're allies with us against germany they had refused to go to war against Japan at that time uh, once we entered the war with the Allies. <clears throat> um, now that they've conquered Germany and, hey, it's time to invade Japan and kind of reap the wards and help um, partition Japan, they want to partition Japan and control Japan to part of Japan too, now they decide, okay, we're going to declare war. Um, and so they declare war on Japan very late uh, to keep... The Soviets from moving forces into Japan, though, uh, we, well, that's not the only reason. To end the war with, with the fewest number of casualties, we use our two nuclear bombs that we've developed. Um, so one is dropped um, on the city of Nagasaki. Uh, and so that's actually the latter one in, in August. Both these bombs are dropped in August. 1945, and the other is on Hiroshima. Uh, so Hiroshima is kind of a manufacturing city, uh, but there were civilians, lots of civilians that died. And so um, you had uh, an estimated 70,000 casualties from one bomb drop. Boom. Nuclear bomb goes off, obviously, and it incinerates thousands of people, but then it kills over the you know next couple of years uh, thousands more from radiation poisoning and, and things like that. Uh, other people, um, you know, are going to suffer lifelong debil debilitations because of it and all that. So terrible, terrible thing, but it's a tough one, guys, because you, you look at the estimates for our number of casualties, so you save roughly probably a half a million American lives, uh, and then on top of that, so you have uh, probably in total around a hundred thousand Japanese killed due to the nuclear bomb. But, like I said, when you're looking at millions of casualties, most likely in order to take Japan, uh, many of them civilian, then you kind of go. Uh, maybe it was the right call. Maybe it was worth it. So that ends the war, guys. Um, the Japanese officially surrender um, aboard the USS Missouri uh, at Tokyo Bay, and the war is over. But now we have to contend with Russia, and so Russia is looking to expand. They're communists. We're capitalists. We don't really trust each other. And now they have a foothold in all of these eastern. European countries that they went through to conquer Germany and they are not interested in, in taking their troops out of there. They're not interested in letting them have free elections like we want them to. Um, they're interested in putting communist governments in place, puppet governments basically that will do what they say in these countries. They're, they want to partition Japan with us. They have partitioned uh, Korea. So Korea was um, conquered by Japan, they moved in when they declared war on Japan, moved into North Korea. We control South Korea. They don't want to get out of there. They want to establish a communist government there, and they do. Uh, and so now this is the big problem, is we've won the war, but now we have these differences in communism and capitalism, um, democracy versus kind of a, a dictatorship. Communism you know, usually supports a dictatorship. Uh, and there's very few freedoms, and so now you have this Cold War is what we call it, where uh, Russia controls a lot of territories, 
or has influence over a lot of territories to